Learn what the day is. Thursday, August 12, 2021. This is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I am humbled by your appearance. So what we talk about? Well, current market conditions, obviously. And it's been kind of a fluid situation, but starting to approve once again. That's a good thing. And we'll flesh that out in just one second. Your questions on trading and on your stock picks, if you don't mind, hold them, hold off on them until we get the live charts so I don't get them mixed up. And if you don't mind, ask about one stock at a time. And if you're watching the recording of this on YouTube or my website and you want to participate live, go to DaveLander.com slash webinar. And the date will probably be old, but the link should bring you to this webinar. And you only have to register once until I forget to add a new webinar. I think a webinar is out until about Thanksgiving right now. All right, so what are we talking about? Well, I want to talk about more on doing trading stuff. And since I did that episode several weeks ago, and maybe even longer, during the week, I really, really, really think a lot about all the trading stuff I do, so to speak, and talking to you guys about it. And it's it's really been, uh, I mean, you would probably think I'm always thinking that way, and I guess I am to some extent, but now I'm really, really cognizant of. I'm also cognizant of a lot of my bad behavior, some of which I'll share with you, not all of it though, not this week. <laughs> And when I, and at the last minute, I just thought maybe you know, trading with the action is will be a good title for some of the stuff we're going to talk about. So I do want to talk about cryptocurrencies because they're hot once again. At least they were. I may have jinxed it, but we'll find out. We'll see. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen to me now and then. And that's from Greg Morris. So again, we've been talking about this trading stuff for for a while now, and I've been working really hard on ETFs and trying to stay out of trouble there. And the secret there, as I've been saying, and, and pretty much in any type of trading, is when conditions are conducive and things are going well, you want to be trading, and when they are not, you don't want to be trading. And it's actually more important not to be trading or that's where the real secret to the market is, is in the not trading when conditions aren't conducive. Now, I often say resist the temptation to join the church of uh, what's happening now. And, and lately, I've been getting a few e emails from different people, mostly a little bit newer to what I'm doing. And it seems like they've been implementing some choppy market type of strategies and, and that's fine if that's all you do, but the problem with changing gears to fit the markets is that you're going to be perpetually out of phase. And like, for instance, I'm going to talk about IPOs in just a minute, and David W., who here's, who's here tonight, said he was taking a break from some of the IPO stuff. And I've been seeing a lot of great stuff happening at IPOs lately. We're going to get to that in just one second. But usually when I talk about resist the, the urge to join a church, what's happening now is if you are trying to trade, let's say, reversals, and then all of a sudden you try to trade pullbacks, and then you try to trade whatever methodology, you're going to be perpetually out of phase as Murphy would have it. And years and years ago, I knew a trader, and it's like, you know, he would be trading reversals, and all of a sudden the market would just break out and keep on going. It's like, Oh no, I'm trading breakouts now. And it's like, you know, no, you don't, Danny. <laughs> so I don't believe him. But most people can't do that. Now, where I do believe in the church of what's happening now, and that's what I want to talk a little bit about tonight and come back to often, is I think it's okay to trade markets that are happening now. And you haven't heard me talk about cryptocurrencies in a long, 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 long time. And I was wondering if you were wondering if I had given up on them. Well, no, they started moving again. And then once again, I got interested. Now, I was thinking this morning, Will Rogers once said, buy stocks that go up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. And I stole that from or took that from my trading full circle course and I think more specifically I took it from the IPO course because pretty much with IPOs with 
with a boatload of caveats, but for the most part, you can just buy them they're going up. In fact, they have a pattern. As you know, the ABCs of technical analysis, when markets could go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, it's going to have to pass through B. So I have a strategy called buy at B. We'll talk about that in just one second. But lately, it seems like the shit coins are back in vogue, and it seems like you could pretty much just buy the ones that are going up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. And we're going to talk about that in just one second. Looks like Will Rogers was the original trend following moron. Now, I don't know if phraseology is the right word, but I try to put things in a positive way. I was going to be a pessimist, but I figured it wouldn't work out, right? With a W. <laughs> and um, I just started reading a new book, and it's it's all about the being positive. Well, it's one of these books that's written many, many years ago. And I'll talk about that in upcoming webinars. I'll give you the title of that and all, if it's worthwhile. But so far, it's it's talking about don't think negatively, think positively, which I had a little trouble with today, but that's another story altogether. But the phraseology, for lack of a better word, by using the word shit coins, it seems kind of negative, but it reminds me that these things are made up and they're pretty bogus. And one of you guys in the group was talking about that you just you can't wrap your head around them so you don't trade them and i think that's great because you see them as something made up and and something that's not worth trading if you don't understand it i don't understand them either and i think they're made up you know but if you could make money in the process and not confuse the issue with facts too much then by all means, remember, we're trading these things. We're not investing our life savings. We're putting a little bit into the ones that are moving and we're taking partial profits and we're going to free roll whatever the market offers us that opportunity. And we'll talk a little bit about that now. Now, in crypto, you can trade things such as pullbacks and TKOs and all my favorite patterns. But you can also trade relative strength when they are moving. Now, you could do this in stock charts ACP. I was, I think there were some others, but I think I was the first to prod them to get the shit coins. <laughs> and I had already started using Trading View, and I have a link for Trading View if you want to go that route. But uh, stock charts ACP should be able to do the same exact thing. And what you simply do is you just click on this little percent change and toward the end of the presentation, we'll jump out into the cryptos and we'll take a look at these and see what's happening. Last time I did that in a live webinar, I stopped to trade a little bit, so we'll have to see. Now, here's the thing, it's not rocket science. If you have a bunch of these in here and they're up huge, then you're in an RS market. If you're not in an RS market, like, of course, as soon as I began talking about crypto, you can see you're not going to have a whole lot of these currencies. And I use that term lightly. <laughs> I'm trying not to say shitcoin too much. But <laughs> but if you've got a whole, you've got a plethora of shitcoins in here, for lack of a better word, because there is no better word for them. And then there, it might be worth trading. In other words, if there's a lot of green in here, if they're up really, really big. Now, it does take, by the way, a leap of faith because you're just buying these things as they're going up. Keep in mind that as markets become more and more efficient, you won't be able to just buy things that are going up, at least not all the time, right? IPOs are a, an inefficient market, and that's why breakout type of strategies works. Breakout strategies in general don't work in stocks or don't work enough to make it worthwhile. The only thing I've ever done breakout in stocks that worked, stocks in general that is, so this was years ago, was, and I wasn't using real money, okay? So maybe with real money, it might be a little tougher to do. I had a hedge fund that was watching me for a while <laughs> and he was gonna do it in his fund or allocate some funds to do it. And, and the volatility I think just killed him and he couldn't handle it. But the only way, long story endless, the only way to make the, the momentum work on a breakout characteristic, because so often they fail, 
would be to buy a plethora of stocks as they're making new highs. And I call that the Landry 100. Now, what would happen is when I was, it basically, there's a there's a there's quite a few caveats I had. I was looking for expansion to range. I was looking for volatility to be a certain level and a few other things. Nothing proprietary. It's just not enough time to get into it tonight. But I'd look for these certain things, and they had to be making a new 52-week high, ideally, or it depends on the market conditions, maybe even a 90-day high. And that was pretty much the whole system. And a lot of times, yeah, these things would fail, but there was 100 stocks in the portfolio. And what would happen is one would take off, we'd jump in, or hypothetically jump in, that is. It would implode the next day, and you'd be like, oh, crap. But you had 99 other ones in there, and then that particular one that just imploded, sometimes a day or two or three later would really take off. And so I'm just kind of looking at this chart right here. But you'd have, let's just say this was a new high, like a 52-week high, or at least a 90-day high at expansion of range. It's like you'd buy in the close, the next day it'd implode. And then the next day, a lot of times it would come right back. And then the next day you'd have a move like this. Not all the time, obviously. And I think that if you tried an individual stock basis, you wouldn't get enough hits, so to speak, to make it worthwhile. But when I had 100 stocks doing this, it worked really, really well. And now it was volatile as all get out. And that's why the hedge fund, I don't think it ever materialized because he was watching me. He was trying to build a portfolio, and I don't think he would ever be able to get to 100 stocks <laughs> just by seeing it seeing it in, in real time. But as I said before, without digressing too much, it, it did print money, but it would just get absolutely creamed every now and then. And I think that kind of, uh, I don't think, not that he didn't have the stomach for it, but his clients probably didn't have the stomach for it, and that's probably why it didn't come to fruition. But anyway, I'm kind of doing the same thing here with these shit coins by buying pretty much all the ones that are really going higher. And yeah, you're, you're getting a few stinkers in here, even in these fantastic momentum markets, but you're hitting on enough of them to make it really worth your while. So this was the case, this was ADA, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> by the way, everything agreed over here. I'm still working on my flagging system now that we have lots of colors. This was actually a different account. And that's why I've got it flagged differently. But I do have an IPT and a stop on that one already. But everything that's green in here, I am free rolling on, so to speak. So it's a free position. And as I walk you through a few of the green ones, you'll see what I mean by that. So in this particular case, sold half of that one. And now I don't know exactly where the stop is, but I would imagine it stops in here somewhere, certainly above where I bought it. So if it comes back in, the worst thing happens is I scratch on the remainder of the trade, ideally make a little bit of money. And then that just frees up a slot for more crypto or another slot for more crypto, so to speak. And that's when I was, the fun thing about running, I know you want to party with me. <laughs> the fun thing about running the Landry 100 was it, it, it was it was easy, I guess, because it wasn't real money, but it was easy in that I I really enjoyed kicking the ones that weren't performing very well out and adding in new ones. And it reached a point where in a, in a really good momentum market, it reached a point where I was kicking things out that were still doing pretty good, good enough to where if I had my own portfolio, I'd still be happy. But there were so many great things happening. And that's kind of the feel that I have for the Bitcoin. So all wasn't for for naught by going through all this trouble and, and, and maintaining this index for several years. I learned an absolute ton doing it. If you have time, I would recommend you you work on a project like that. And I met somebody recently that that invests in things and and looks for businesses and stuff. And and maybe I'll pitch him the idea. And I would just look for somebody to back it just so we could do it and, and, and gain all the benefits from it. And hopefully it'd be successful. I think it would. But anyway, that's what I'm doing with these cryptocurrencies. So here's KSM. Now, these I grabbed straight out of Kraken. 
I love the way that you could trade off the chart in Kraken. I don't know about you guys, but I find Kraken to be a little buggy at times. Sometimes I get excited about one of these cryptos and I buy it and then, or try to buy it, I should say, and it won't let me buy it. I don't know why. And I get some kind of nondescript error message. When you look on the website, it, it basically calls a nondescript error message or something, an 810 error. But anyway, if anybody's got experience with that, know what's going on, please let me know. For the most part, though, I'm able to trade, and I love the way you can trade right off the screen. So in this case here, you can see I got in here. This It tells you exactly where you got in. And then I flipped them out here. So it was 240 to, let's say, 290 or so. So it was about a 50-point run, which was pretty damn nice. It doesn't look like it in the charts. And again, I just bought it because it was going up. It tailed off a little bit, but you can see it took off the next day. And that's the thing about momentum is sometimes they give you that big fake out move higher and then they shake you out. And then of course the, the, the real move comes in the next day. Just like just like I explained with the Landry 100. They have, in, in fact, I've seen somebody wonder where they got the idea from <laughs> that had a system that, that worked very uh, strangely similar to what I'm saying, but I won't throw anybody under the bus. I'm sure they just, they come to their they came to their uh, research uh, honestly. But anyway, you can see right here, so take partial profits and we're at break even on a remainder and we'll see what's gonna happen on that one. So that's KSM. Matic, I ended up exiting all in this one account. And what happened was I ended up with some shares, if you wanna call them that, whatever you call them, some left over in another account. And I, it just was too good not to take in this particular account. But look what happened though, okay? Here's another example. And technically I could have stopped myself out on that one, but I guess by the time I got around to getting the stops in, it had already reversed a little bit. But again, there's your breakout, fake out, breakout, okay? And there's definitely something there. Here's Uni, you know what they do? I have no idea. <laughs> it's probably not even real, like doggy coin. Doggy coin is made up, right? Who cares, right? So you can see on this one, I didn't get on this, you know, on this bar here or even this bar here because there was something else probably that was catching my eyes more exciting. But you can see, got in around 25, flipped out right around 30, and now my stop is at 26. So you can see I'm doing the same exact money management that I would do in my own methodology. The only thing I'm doing different is I'm playing RS. Now I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth and say jump from methodology to methodology, which I just told you not to do. But if you're in a relative strength type of market, in a market that's breaking out and following through, then you could do certain things like this relative strength trading. And as I said, ad nauseum, one of my clients used to take the Landry list, which is my list. I know you guys know what it is here, but the, my list that I publish every day in my trading service. And he was just using like, a, I think it was a CNBC app or something. And he was just buying two or three of them that were doing well in the day. And he would hold them as much long in the day, as much of the day as he could. Sometimes he'd flip them out and and, and put some other ones in that were doing really well as, as they kind of faded out during the day. Anyway, according to him, he said he paid for two down payments on investment properties by doing that. But keep in mind at that particular time, at those particular times, the market was really moving. These Bitcoins die out, the shit coins die out for a while, and then they just take off again, and it could be like butter. So here's the SC. This is one I, I just have an affinity for, for whatever strange reason. And you can see it did break out, came back in. Now, it's possible that when this thing came back in, if a bunch of other ones were taken off, I would just ditch this one and go grab another one, right? Okay, these things could be like a bus. Another one will, will come along when you're in a momentum market. How do you know if you're in a momentum market? Well, if your screen is mostly green and the numbers are really big and every one of them is banging out new highs, then you're in a momentum market. Unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't seem to last that long, unfortunately. And whenever you start thinking about car shopping <laughs> or pool shopping as I've been doing lately, it's probably time to be careful. And we'll get to some of that in just one second. But you can see, got in here, flipped out half here, okay? And then uh, right now my stop is here. Now, one thing that's a little frustrating sometimes is sometimes in the middle of the night, these things will just double on you. 
And unless you got an order to take advantage of that, then you're you're just going to watch it tail higher. Or you watch the next morning as it hit tail higher all day long, all night long. Let me rewind that. You wake up and see that it doubled overnight, but it's pretty much back to where it was before you went to bed. The other thing too, just FYI, Saturday mornings, one of my favorite times to trade these things. In fact, if we go in and probably look at some of these dates where I got in, it was probably on Saturday morning, <laughs> you know? And I think people with day jobs wake up on Saturday mornings and try to avoid honeydews and they go to the office and they trade cryptocurrencies. I know that's what I do. <laughs> I know you probably want to party with me, huh? Anyway, this one here, it doesn't look like much, but it was enough to get a little money out of it. You could see, and I think what I did on this one, if memory serves, instead of taking profits like up here with a limit order, I just trailed up, manually trailed the stop higher. And at this point here, I had enough in the trade to where it would it would be nicely profitable in half, and I trailed the stop higher. And then you could see on the remainder, I'm giving it a little bit of room, but I'm well above break not only well above break even i'm well above where i took those partial profits so we'll see but this one has lost momentum now here's the thing if you're trading and you're in a momentum market then by all means especially especially well if you haven't hit the profit target okay on something like this then let's say you got it in this wide range bar here be it a good little breakout player or i don't want to call it breakout play let's call it rs play a little bit different but you're playing the RS, this is the strongest one. You get in it and it just kind of fizzles out and goes sideways in here. But there's another one that's taken off. Just cash out of this one so you'll have a slot open, so to speak. Like I said earlier, when I had the 100 slots open for stocks. Hey, by the way, you treat cash as an asset class, okay? And if you can't find anything, then you end up with 100 slots that have cash, okay? I'm totally okay with cash. I get a little nervous. When I look at my crypto accounts and see I don't have any slots available, so to speak, to buy something new. Now here's Kava. You can see entry was here and then it came right back in. It's like, uh oh, we're in trouble here. But obviously nothing else looked better around that's probably a Saturday morning. If you go in and check what day was the 25th. <laughs> I should check that real quick. 25th of July. Anybody know? Let's see. Yeah, no, it was a Sunday morning. Uh, Sunday mornings are good too. <laughs> Sunday mornings too. Sunday morning, Saturday morning. You know, my wife will be like, I'll be ready in two minutes. You need to be ready. It's like, okay, well, I got two minutes. I'll come to my office. She's like, where the hell are you? <laughs> I mean, they're trading shit coins, baby. I'm trying to pay for that pool you want outside. Now, here's Ada. No, I'm sorry, I'll go. And this is reminds me of the movie Argo. Argo yourself. <laughs> anyway. You can see that so far it hasn't worked, okay? So I gotta stop down here. So if this breakout fails, comes back in, stops me out. So what? That'll open up another slot for me, but I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully, and we'll take, we'll take a look at these live in just a minute, but hopefully this is the breakout, fake out, breakout pattern, okay? That's funny, you say the same thing? <laughs> Argo, <laughs> Algo, Argo. <laughs> That was an okay movie. It wasn't bad. It wasn't, it wasn't phenomenal. A GRT, this is another brokerage account where I can't trade off the screen. So this is a trading, uh, what do you call this? Trading view chart. The buy was here. And so far, we haven't done much on that one. We'll check it in real time in just a minute. LRC, another one that's failed. You can see right when I get excited about telling you about Bitcoin, it's like I told John Z the other day. Because none of his were following through and like, you're just not buying enough of them. And, and you know, maybe we're backing into something here. You know, the Landry 100 wouldn't work as Landry 10 or Landry 5 playing the momentum like that, the relative strength game. But it does work if you buy 100. And maybe that's the secret with these shit coins is if you got 20 of them that are really doing well and you end up in the top, let's say, at least 10 or 15 of them, then you might be okay. Oh, and you can see I already sold this one out. So didn't have a lot of patience in this particular case. So I felt like it should break out and keep breaking out, but maybe it's a fake out breakout. We'll see. 
But for some reason, I don't know if I had something else I liked, but I decided to free up a slot. So that's just kind of a, a rundown on the shit coins. I think they could really be worthwhile at times, but you haven't heard me talk about them in a while. And I nearly forgot about them. And John Z was peeping around, peeping up in the, in the group, talking about them. I'm like, oh, well, I hadn't looked at that for a while because I've been chasing these other profit centers, the Russian dolls, the IP, the, well, the IPOs. Yeah, of course, I always do that. But the ETFs and trying to stay out of choppy markets and all this other good stuff. All right, any questions on crypto before we move on? So IPO is not dead yet. David W said he had backed off on IPOs a little bit. And I think that IPO is still doing pretty good. I just want to show you this one real quick. I borrowed this from, this was from my Trading Simplified show. So I'll go through it pretty quickly. People say, Dave, why you beat that dead horse so much? Well, because a lot of things I say, it seems like I have to say them over and over again until people get it. And then the other thing is, I have a lot of new people coming in, so they probably never heard me say it, and then their eyes will glaze over about two weeks in. <laughs> but they might not know where to find it just yet behind the firewall in the members area because they haven't completed all the courses. By the way, I know what you've done and what you haven't done. So if you ask me a question and you've only completed like one segment of one course, then I know you have. You know, that's why I got to beat that dead horse, because I said it three times in the course, maybe four. Anyway, the uh, getting back to where we were with the IPOs, and I don't want to get too redundant because we just talked about it, but the day one, if day one sets a high for the first four days, okay, and you can see in this particular case, day one was the highest day of the first four. If day two was the high, then that rule is no longer in effect but in this particular stock it was okay so it's a simple little rule but i get a lot a lot of questions on this like why wouldn't you do this or why was the entry here and i'm like well you got to go back to the day one rule okay so the day one rule remains in effect here until you get a trigger obviously here's day five your new closing high, believe it or not, is right there, but your buy is not until it closes above this high here, okay? So that dotted line is a buy line. You can see it kind of meandered a little bit. Technically, what it triggered as a buy at B without the day one rule, but with the day one rule, you have to wait until it closes above that, and this is where I actually bought it. Next day, it ran up, ran up very nicely, and... I was not gonna let this gift horse in the mouth. I took partial profits. And by the end of the day, it came back in and I was barely profitable on the remainder. But now here's a strange thing because I'm gonna show you one in one second that totally stressed me out when it came right back in. Well, maybe because I didn't take profits. But on this one, I'm kind of like, so what? I just got paid in one day. If this thing doesn't keep taking off, so what? It's gonna free up a slot, right? I had the right mindset here. But I'm a very emotional guy, and I get very emotional really soon afterwards. And I'll show you that in just one second. I did take this across multiple accounts. I think I had a bigger position somewhere else, I seem to remember. But you can see I kind of anticipated following through, got in a little bit early. I think I had a bunch of day trades to get out of. Sorry, intraday trades to get out on that particular one. And then early in the morning, I flipped out half of the shares, and I still have half on. Now, someone texted me and said, dang, I knew it would come back in like they've been doing lately. I should have sold it all. And he was upset because he didn't sell it all. And the next day, it took off again. Now, I think it's since pulled back, unfortunately. But I get stopped out and stopped out. I think I might be close to getting stopped on this one. But anyway, he got me thinking about, you got to be careful. And believe me, I'm guilty too. I have a lot of <laughs> shame. Remember my bell? Shame. <laughs> I ring the bell a lot this week, you know, and here I am using this gentleman as an example of sort of putting yourself in a lose-lose situation where in this particular case, he's like, dang, I should have sold it all. So it comes back in, stops him out. He's going to be aggravated. If he sells it all, the next day it takes off like it did in this particular case, then he's going to be aggravated. So you end up 
you got to be careful not to put yourself in a lose-lose situation. I'll show you one of mine, and I might admit to a few more as the night wears on. So this was ERAS, and the the day one rule is not in effect because day three took out the day one high. It's a, I know everybody here understands, but it's a simple little rule, and I guarantee you I'll get an email on it next week. Can you, can you explain why you got in so late on this IPO? Yes. <laughs> Y'all want me to stop beating a dead horse? You won't stop? No, it's okay. I, I realize not everybody's up to speed, and that's why one reason I do beat a dead horse. Anyway, day five. Now, it was kind of a marginal buy. I like a more stressy looking buy. I like a more committed type of close than that but you know, I think I have a slide on my thinking at the time now a few days ago I mentally monetized this thing and I had it in more than one account and I know one account was I wanted two thousand dollars okay and I told myself Dave just put in that limit order and go about your life and I'm like, you know, $1,700 is a lot of money. This thing's having a hard time getting going. I should lock in half of that. So what if I don't have a 2K? If it takes off, at least I'll still have half. And I'm like, no, I'm going to follow my plan because that's what Dave Landry does. Well, then, of course, it comes back in. And I went ahead and got out. There's all the trades if you want to look at them. I think that's 600 shares if you add it all up. And I made a tiny profit on that. I'm not pretty excited about it, believe me. And I think that when I went to go to exit, if memory serves, and I probably wrote it down. I just don't I don't feel like going back and rereading it. <laughs> it's aggravating sometimes. That's the downside of documenting everything as you should, is that sometimes you don't want to know, right? But I remember looking at the spread and it's like, oh well, I got seventeen hundred dollars or eighteen hundred dollars, whatever the case may be. I was like, ah, but, you know, that spread's kind of ugly. I'm only going to end up with $1,600. And, you know, and then it was $1,500, $1,400, $1,300, $1,200, you know, and so on and so forth. It's like the, the turkey story we told last week. I told last week, at least. And that's something I was going to get into this week. But there's so many uh, stuff, other stuff to cover with the, with the uh, shit coins and all. But that comes from Fred Kelly. This was originally, in fact, I actually, act, after looking at it, the turkey story, as we talked about last week, the, the guy had like 12 turkeys in his trap, and then another one walked in, he had 13. This is Fred Kelly, why you win or lose. And it was originally published, I first read it in How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. And then, but it's actually from Fred Kelly. So anyway, and that's the thing you're gonna find. This is this book was written, uh, I think we got no, I don't have him this week. Next week, we'll talk about Fred. It's an okay read. It's not phenomenal. There's a couple things in here I've uh, underlined and such. A couple of quotes or so. There's one I want to talk about a little bit next week about, you know, I tell you not to mentally monetize things, but sometimes I think it's important to actually monetize things like and, and and again i'm getting ahead of myself i got all the notes i was gonna talk about this week but we'll talk about it next week but the, just uh just kind of a teaser i know you can't can't wait right we'll go to sleep like john z was you know, joking a while back he's like anytime i feel like going buy a new car with the crypto i i should just sell them and go buy a new car like and, and that's that might be something to think about actually doing actually monetizing the middly monetizing could be a dangerous thing but anyway now going into it like i said it was kind of a mediocre trigger if you would come to me with the setup and say dave should i get in i'm like nah it's kind of a mediocre trigger right and then i looked at gift horse in the mouth turkey counting because this thing was having a hard time getting going it finally got going i had good profits and again i kept telling myself in my head dave if you can make let's just say 800 of that $1,700, at least you have $800 in your account and you do it across multiple accounts. That's pretty good money for a week's worth, right? If you add it all up. And then if it takes off, you're still there. And I look at some of these stocks, ASO, 
ARLP, APG, some of these stocks we've been in forever, even though only half the shares are on, especially like in, in one of my accounts where I just really put them on and just try to forget about them and not mess with them too much. I'm kind of shocked when I look at the open profits of how big they are from riding out that second half. Sure, it'd be nice to have the whole half, the whole thing, not the whole half, the whole thing. But you look at these big numbers and think, you know, half is 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 plenty enough. I mean, you start out with a thousand shares or something, and you still have like 500 on something like ASO. You still got 500 shares on. You've been riding it for 20, 30 points. It starts to add up after a while. Anyway, I think I was guilty. I think I jinxed myself by talking about the turkey counting last week because I'm looking at this thing and I'm going like, oh, I got $1,700, $1,800. And it's like, ah, oh, with the spread, it's only going to be closer to $1,650. And oh, now, oh, we just dropped a quarter point. And, you know, there goes another, <laughs> you know, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks before you know it. I said, well, I'm just going to follow my plan. And, and my original plan, you know, which, which had me getting out about another two points higher. And then it just imploded. So you got to be careful to to not put yourself in a lose lose situation. And and sometimes I'm guilty of this with the ETF stuff. You got to be careful because I end up long a bunch of inverse ETFs because I think the market's going down. But then I end up long S and P futures. And then it's kind of like, well, which is it? You know, it's like I'm wanting the market to go up. Excuse me, I'm wanting the market to go up, but I want all my sectors that I'm long the inverse to go down and you put yourself in kind of a, a lose-lose situation. I mean, anybody here, I mean, I'm guilty too. Anybody here ever, you know, you long calls or something and all of a sudden the market begins to implode a little bit and you're like, well, I'll just get long puts. And then all of a sudden the market begins to rally a little bit, but not quite enough. It's kind of like, if it starts to drop, it's like, do you want it to go up? Do you want it to go down? You, you're creating a lot of animosity for yourself if that's the right word. So I couldn't, basically I couldn't bear to have a decent winner turn into a losing trade. Now, I'm not sure why I was so flippant on the CRBU, probably because it's like, ah, I hit the profit target, but it was within a few days, right? Hits the profit target. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm in good shape. Close your eyes and hang on for dear life. But in this particular case, I'm mentally monetized. And then I started reasoning why I should take the profits. And then when they started eroding a little bit, I started reasoning why I shouldn't. And by the way, what you need to do when you're doing all this mental masturbation, for lack of a better word, I guess monkey mind, right, is wrap your head around your emotional thoughts and realize that others are doing the same. In fact, that's what makes the market. And I think Yogi Berra once said, if the world were perfect, it wouldn't be, okay? If stock markets weren't emotional, they wouldn't be. Everyone would agree upon the price or the price would be based on some model. Everybody agrees on the model and that's what the price is. But instead, everybody has emotions. Now, I wanna jump back into IPOs. I wanna show you one where I went through some of this monkey mind emotion things. So one, two, three, four, five, and notice that day one set the high for the week. There's that day high, day one high rule, okay? Reason to have that day one high rule is sometimes they get ahead of themselves on the first day of trading, and then you'll never see that high again, right? You might see a new closing high, but you'll never see the high high again. And that new closing high might just suck you in to a bad trade. So that's how I came up with the day one high rule. So if you draw a line across day one high, the entry was here. Now, if you've been around for a while, especially if you took the IPO course, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of IPOs that trade in a narrow range. I'm also not a big fan of a brick and mortar retailer, a bank, or something kind of boring, right? When it comes to IPOs, I'd rather the more obscure the better. And I don't, I don't know when it came exactly came public or was an IPO worth trading, but I like that stock a while back. That was unmanned aerial agricultural 
drones. I'm like, all right, that's something I can't wrap my head around. So maybe there might be some excitement. And, and I can almost guarantee you that stock is going to trade purely on emotions. But a bank, eh, not so much. So why would I buy a narrow range bank? By the way, with something like a bank, like ASO, for instance, I couldn't buy ASO Academy, right? I couldn't buy the buy it be the early trade like I'm showing you here. And the reason is because it was a brick and mortar retailer. And I said, well, let's just see if it could take off and then I'll buy the first pullback. And luckily it worked out for both me and my peeps very nicely. Now, what was my thinking on this bank that was trading in a narrow range? Well, kind of reminds me of that song. Can you tell me where my head was at when you found me? <laughs> you know, I got that song in my head since I was I looked it up earlier. Like, who is that? The range was small, but it's a bank. The range was small, and it's a bank. A bank. How boring can a bank be? And then I got to thinking, yeah, but you recently made a lot of money in a bank IPO just as it crawled along. It'd come in every day. It was up a quarter a point. About to snore, you know, bore you to death, but 1,000, 2,000 shares is like, well, wait a minute, that's actually turning into some really real money. The other thing you have to be cognizant of, and lately, like this week, I'm not having a really good uh, week on the intraday stuff. A few weeks ago, I printed money and I'm showing you all this great and wonderful stuff. And then I also figured out how to stay out the market a little bit. So I thought, and I showed you all that great, wonderful stuff. This week, not so much. I guess the week ain't over yet, right? Tomorrow's Friday the 13th, though. Like I said, in the service tonight, EBC, uh, uh, today felt like uh, Friday the 13th. Okay, sorry. EBC, yeah, was the IPO uh, that I, this was the first buy at B. I took in a narrow range, fairly narrow range stock. I said, it's a bank. Let's just give it a shot. And at that point in time, the banks were acting more like momentum stocks. Now, banks are coming back now. I wouldn't say they're coming back like momentum stocks now, but at the particular time, that's that was my reasoning about breaking my narrow range rule and not waiting for the first pullback. But anyway, getting back to my emotional state, where my head was at, right? It's like, why am I letting, well, you know, wait, am I letting that or recent trades influence me? So. In the back of my head, I'm thinking about how exciting that bank was because it was in a narrow range and it just kind of crawled along forever and it was wonderful. And it was the most best boarding investment I ever had. It just went up and 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 up. It's kind of like the little, you know, the little man on uh what do you call that prize right? You know, do 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 it's like, yeah, it's great. But it was boring, but so what? You know, at the end of the day, it was really, really good money even though it was a bank. But again, you need to wrap your head around where your head is when you're making a trade. And then of course, when you have the monkey mind thing going on, or if you're doing something that's emotional and irrational, as we often do, everything we do is emotional, but whether or not it's irrational, you know, I don't know. But you have to wrap your head around your own emotional state to understand the emotional state of the market and how markets are not necessarily logical. Don't confuse the issue with facts is what I say quite often. But maybe, just maybe, I'm looking for, because I hadn't had a core trade in a month, some of these, some of these recent ETFs didn't work out. I may have missed an IPO or two. I've shown you a few that I caught. There might be one or two that that I, I didn't take for specific reasons, but I still regret the fact that they went up, okay? Can't have a cake and eat it too. I know, this is what I preached earlier. The point is, I probably let recent trading influence me on that. Now, oh, David was screaming at me. <laughs> uh, you know that I'm paying it, just so you know I'm paying attention, he is in BLFY, congratulations. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I know you keep your keyboard was stuck. No problem. Yeah, I mean that's one. You know, BLFY. I know you got you have some grandkids, right? You probably got a little money saved for them, right? Down the road, whatever for the college funds. Yeah, they're probably not going to go to college, and if they do, they're probably going to study something dumb, right? Take all their money and stick it in that one stock. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Please. Um, 
I I really haven't traded this pattern a whole lot. It's one of the one of the, probably the only thing I can think of that I've created, so to speak, that I haven't traded much. Okay. And like if you go back to like 2014, I talked about first deep retracements and IPOs, and I said that I hadn't traded them. But since 2014, probably within the next six months or so, after seeing so many of them, I began trading like the deep pullback, the first deep retracement in IPOs. Well, with the buy at B, my rule was $20. And now I guess we just should officially starting today. Let's just officially make it $30 because there's been a lot of good IPOs between $20 and $30 that have taken off. Now, the question is, what do you do in an IPO that's higher than $30? And you're going to find the higher price IPOs, not as a cold, hard fact, but as a general statement, they often fail a lot more than the lower priced IPOs within reason. You know, you probably need at least five or six bucks a share before trading an IPO. Seems like somewhere between 10 and 30 is a sweet spot. The the perverse thing that these damn higher price IPOs could do is they could go higher for a little while to get you excited and then they implode and you end up losing money. So you got to be careful sometimes with these high price IPOs. And this is kind of a microcosm of what I'm talking about. I'm just seeing this for the first time back here. But notice how it's like high price, high price. There it goes. It's all to the races. I better jump in and you feel pretty good the next day. By the end of the day, provided you didn't take any profits quickly, you are at a loss. And the next day you're at a big loss and a bigger loss. And you better you better get out quickly or you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. But I felt like I needed something, and again, I haven't traded this much, but I needed something to help get me into these higher price IPOs. So along the lines of the buy at B, your entry would be here for a $30 or lower price stock, right? Well, what do you do with a higher price stock? Well, I came up with the one day five SMA momentum filter, for lack of a better name. And that's just one day of Landry light, meaning that the low is greater than the five day SMA. Now, if you think about it, five days is, isn't much. So for a market to pull away from its five-day moving average, it's it has to have a little bit of momentum to do that, okay? So the only rule is it has to have one bar of daylight on the day that it triggers. Oh, David, doesn't matter if you have the caps on. I don't care. I could haul that all day. <laughs> I'm used to it. Now, here's another example. And I wanted to show you this one for a couple of reasons. So it's higher price. You your buy at B, I suppose, would have been on this day here because day one didn't set the high. The buy with the momentum would be on that day there because now you've got one day of daylight. Now, I don't know if it would have worked out or not with money management, but notice that it came back in. And the question is, should you rebuy? And I know David W. in here has done a lot more IPO research than me, but one thing I've found with IPOs is your second chance buy at B might be a pretty good pattern to look into. It. You might want to write that down. And sometimes these IPOs, they take off, come in, and then the real move happens on the second entry. David W. is in GXO on a second entry. There you go. Somehow I knew that. <laughs> I'm getting to know you guys and what you do, and I know who's doing what. It's pretty exciting, yeah. So yeah, that would be a second entry on that. One. It's a little scary though, right? You're just buying. Oh, it's just it's it's hard to buy in that big old wide range bar. But what was it a while back? We did that on. Uh, Might have been Caribou CRBU, and that's the other tricky thing too. I think we talked about that last week. Is when you have a narrow range, and all of a sudden your range is made, so to speak, on that one trigger day. I don't want to digress too far into that. So again, I've been really cognizant, not that I wasn't in the past of my trading stuff, but I kind of think in terms of what I'm doing with the weekend charts in mind more and more. And also, as I think I've said before, I'm working to become more and more transparent. That's why you're seeing a lot more trades that I actually took being made public. And that's kind of helping me. It helps you because you see that I'm actually doing this, but it helps me 
because I don't I don't want to look stupid, you know, and I don't want to have a bunch of losses to show you for the week. And you just it just helps to have, like I said, you know, you want to sing like nobody's sing like nobody's watching, sing like sing like you're singing in the shower. Norm Macdonald has one. I got to get that one out of my head. It's not a good one. <laughs> not politically correct at all. Anyway, you want to sing like you sing in the shower, uh, dance like nobody's watching. But when you trade, you almost want to trade like somebody's watching you. And I, I joke with one of my clients often. We go back and forth on trades a lot. And uh, like some days I'll just say, my uh, what do you call the guy that that he's got a full time job at these hedge funds, maybe more than one. The uh, damage what do you call the guy? The damage control guy, the risk control, the risk manager. It's like oh, the risk managers could be mad at me on this one, <laughs> you know. Anyway, here's one of the perverse things. You look to trade the shit coins like when you trade these things. Like, ah. When you haven't heard me talk about it in a long, long time, which is which has been up until just recently, right? And then you want to stop when I appear to be bragging about them a bit, and hopefully not this time, though. <laughs> but who knows? And I'm willing to let that account go, or accounts. I'm thinking about the three accounts now, because each brokerage, if you want to call them that, only has certain coins and. Some brokerages are so exclusive with certain coins. And anyway, you'll learn fast once you get an account or two open. And you'll probably find yourself with three accounts too. Anyway, long story endless, that's kind of the the, the normal cycle is, is when you're feeling like God in the markets, keep trading them, don't get me wrong, but make sure you're trailing those stops and looking to exit those shares should you need to. Hey, remember we're talking about patience? Uh, one of the things I... I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but I was thinking about trading tickets, and it'd probably be good for my own uh, my own trading. But I got some tickets to mess around with, and I think it'd be fun to to make it a product and like work with you guys. And you get so many tickets, and I'll I'll take any trade that I approve, I'll take it with you. And I don't know how it would work all that out because it's supposed to be educational purposes only, but it, it would be fun to do. And I I I bet it would work. I would almost guarantee, not on every trade, but if we did 10 trades, I, I would be willing to bet it would be profitable because on those 10 trades, we're going to be very selective. And I guarantee you, we're not going to be trading for recreation, okay, or excitement or entertainment. Anyway, being patient, I hope, has helped. And, and I haven't, if you go back and look at those, and I did some screen captures earlier, and I was like, the the trades that I did like this week and last week or whatever in Bitcoin to find prior trades, you had to go back many, many, many months. When I say Bitcoin, I mean shit coins, all those little stupid coins. I guess I should call them all coins, but again, I think it's it's good for me in my head to say, hey man, don't stick around these things. You get stopped out, you get stopped out. Anyway, being patient is where what I was talking about. We had our first course set up tonight in about a month. And Newer clients, not older clients, but older clients appreciate me and I appreciate you. But newer clients are probably thinking, why am I paying this guy to tell me to not do anything? <laughs> and I had quite a few come and go within the last few weeks, and that's fine. And hopefully they go off the chains for rainbows and then come back when they realize there's, there's no rainbows out there or, or you're chasing rainbows, that they are chasing rainbows. Anyway, but we had our first course set up tonight in around a month. And as I've been saying lately, Fingers crossed, and I and I and I don't want to put too much expectations on me or you, okay? Because we could both get into a lot of trouble. But I'd be willing to bet within the next, let's maybe not this particular one, but maybe within the next five, I'd be willing to bet that we hit it pretty big on one of those next five. And hold my feet to the fire. Let's let's see what happens, okay? And then the other thing I'm gonna do eventually when I get around to it is the I'm going, to, I'm going to take the first 10 trading tickets and do the first 10 trades and see how that works and make them public either ahead of time or it has to be on the trading service before I actually spend a ticket, so to speak. And by the way, this comes from Charlie Munger's Almanac. Not a big value fan because value funds lose about half their value every now and then. <laughs> but these guys get a pass for some reason. I don't know why. 
you know, well, I guess they made billions over the last whatever, 50 years, but I, I don't know. I, I think their time is done, but who knows? I, I'm getting in a lot of trouble. But I do think there is some good wit and wisdom from Charlie Munger. In fact, he should call his book Wit and Wisdom. How about that? Of Charlie Munger. Thing where he's about a ton. <laughs> good Lord. Always be, what the hell's going on in there? So we'll just uh we'll just see what happens. And you know, it was hard not doing anything for a month. And believe me, it's like tonight. My wife's like, you're done with your trading service already? You know, it's known she didn't see me till at least five. And I'm like, yeah, babe, it's it's like we I've I found a setup. It's it's actually easier to do it on nights where there's setups. When there's not setups, I just keep looking, thinking there's gonna be something out there. And finally I just have to quit and record and say there's nothing to do. I don't know why it's not like Tony Elvis wanna do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, starring, staring. I think it's starting and thinking about my role with trading tickets. So anyway, I've got this idea in my head. So I have to give Mr. Munger and I guess more specifically, Mr. Buffett, the idea for that. And I talked about that in the stock chart show recently. All right, any questions, anything so far? I tell you what, let me see if I can get the altcoins, yeah, I called them the right name, up and running. And we'll take a quick look at them. I'm gonna pop over to TradingView and again, the ACP platform is really good on the altcoins. So if you already have that, just use that. David is holler, the other David is hollering at me now. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that when we get to the uh, live charts. That's great, yeah, uh, keep, keep the questions coming. So just real quick, let's just see. And I should still be in all of these unless some of them stopped out from earlier. But there's the ADA, and you can see that I just played a breakout there, and it's green, so it means that the IPT was hit. We just looked at this one earlier. KSM is coming back in. I have a stop in there. I'll probably get stopped out. Matic, I'm actually out of, and that's kind of a long story, but I had it in one account, and I actually forgot about it. Then I bought it back on the breakout, and then I ended up out of all of it. There's the SC, not doing too much right now. It's the quantum. We talked about that earlier. The uni, ocean. GRT is doing pretty good. In fact, that looks like a buy right now, right? There's Algo, about the Argo. Argo me out of it. XLM coming in a little bit, not doing so well. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. When I started the day, I was excited to show you these, thinking that I would look like a genius. But now they're beginning to come in a little bit. So let me just show you the RS thing. And again, you can do it in ACP. But let's see what's happening here. Okay, so you got NKN. Now, this one already did its little tail higher. And this would have been good. If you'd have caught this little tail, that would have been a time to get in on that one a couple of days ago. GRT, I'm already in, as I just said. Now, one of these I tried, a couple of these I tried to buy in the order didn't go through, like I said earlier. So that's a little frustrating. But this one looks okay. It's up a little today. And you can see on some of these, they took off a little bit earlier. Here's one that I was frustrated on. Anybody know anything about this or why? But like back here, I tried, I, I like this little pullback back here. I tried to get in back here. I tried to get in this breakout. And, you know, of course, it triples from where I was looking at it, but it wouldn't, uh, it says Kraken up here. It wouldn't let me buy it on Kraken, no matter what I did. Anyway, you can see there's a few. Let's, are these percent change now? Let's double check this. But there's a few in here when you go by percent change that are doing pretty good. But there's not a tremendous amount setting the world on fire. They're all up just a little bit. But keep an eye on this now. They're turning green again. It's like these things get hot, and then they cool off. Then they get hot, and they cool off. You know, and so... Just get a feel for how they how they run. And when they're running, something like, what's GRT looking like now? Okay, you just go in and close your eyes and buy. I know it sounds crazy, but just close your eyes and buy something like GRT. In fact, that's a, that's a put the kids college education fund in that, right? I hope nobody takes me serious on that. That's, if I say that, it means I'm already long. I'm talking my position as a joke. 
anyway, so that's the coins. You get the idea of, of what I'm doing with this, playing this RS game, and it could be a lot of fun. It's fun for me. I know you want to cry with me. All right, let's pop out and pop in the charts. Keep the questions coming. I'm going to get to your question next, David S. I was looking for a John today in the group. We've got a bunch of Johns, and then we got a boatload, an S ton of <laughs> of Davids too. I right, take a look at peas. Peas, look at that. Bam, winning all time highs. Sound like Tony Elvis in there. Not a bad day, right? It's only up a third percent, but I'll take it. My big concern lately is that the peas have been kind of wedging in here a little bit, especially if you tighten up a little to like right there and right there. And usually an upward wedge resolves itself to the downside. It, you can't time off of it, okay? But in the back of my head, I'm going like, man, this thing is just drifting higher. I don't like it. I need to see some acceleration higher. And we got a tiny bit of that today. And I ended up long futures by the close. So hopefully overnight, I wake up happy. I haven't heard a zing yet. If it, I hear a zing, I might drop, it, drop an F-bomb. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I was saying earlier. I ended up with long inverse ETFs, but then also long futures. And so I could possibly have put myself into a lose-lose situation. Okay, NASDAQ composite, a little bit different story, kind of just all over the place. Wide and loose, or not really loose anymore. The good news, it is tightening up a little bit, okay? We're a little shy of all-time highs. I sure like to see it get there. Take a look at the Rusty. The Rusty's been less than stellar. Let's just say that, okay? It has closed for a few days running, actually five days, one, two, three, four, five. So that's one week. That's better than poking the eye. Above the 30 EMA, 20 EMA, and 10 simple, also known as the bow tie moving averages. I don't get too excited about the order when they're bouncing around in a range like this, but when they do, when the stock or commodity or index hits all time highs and then makes a bow tie down, then I become concerned. Okay. So as long as the Russell hangs in there, I'm not going to get too excited. Yeah, it still looks toppy longer term, but you know, a few big updates could make all the difference in the world, something like the Rusty. Energies have been working their way a little bit higher. But they still look questionable in here. So I wouldn't get too excited about the energies at this juncture. On the short side, as I've been saying, a nausea, and they have a little support down here. This is why I haven't been able to find any setups on the short side. Metals and mining have turned back up, as you can see. And now they've been chopping around a little bit. What's interesting here is take a look at gold, the commodity, and silver, too. We'll take a look at that in just one second. Tiny bit of a bounce the last couple of days, but gold looks like it's in trouble all over the place, but in general going down, right? Silver looks like it's in trouble. And metals and mining, once again, if I could find it, is kind of ignoring what's happening in gold and silver and kind of hanging in there. So if gold and silver stabilize, maybe it's kind of like a ball into water. Maybe, maybe metals and mining can take off once again. Because that's the gold stocks, not looking too good. And here's the silver stocks looking even worse. Let's take a look at the banks. Well, banks looked pretty ugly a while back. We sort of had this first thrust down, inverted cup and handle, a little bit of a sell-off, lots of retraces, and now it's trying to go back up. So that's that's a good thing as far as helping out the overall market. Financial services, actually all-time highs today. So that is certainly a good thing. Financials in general, I've been pretty bearish on for a while. This is the XLK, but look at that, brand new highs. Okay, a little tiny Elvis market. Back to the downside, transports have been looking so hot as of late. Back about the moving averages, but still, eh, toppy and looking like a downtrend, at least for now. Let's take a look at retail. Retail, just shy of all-time highs. This little gap in here, a little concerning, but it has worked its way higher. I'd like to see new highs and have it stay there for a while and not look back. And then take a look at, like software, brand new highs. Look at that, kind of up almost 1%. So that's pretty impressive. And by the way, with the market at new highs, NASDAQ chopping around, Russell not looking too good, and some of these other sectors at new highs, that's why we're not seeing a lot of setups because we trade pullbacks and we trade trends, okay? And that's just perfectly 
normal. Semiconductors have been pulling back a little bit in here, but so far it looks like just that. They look pretty good. They broke out to new highs with a little bit of acceleration, pulling back a little bit. It looked poised to make a new leg higher. All right, so let's take a look. Let me take a look at that zip because it's a question in general. And then if you want to ask about individual stocks, go ahead and do so now. Let's see, zip at 21.66. It hit my IPT, congratulations. My stop is at 25. Is this too far away or not? No, I don't think so. I mean, you know, where would it fail, okay? And once you once you get your additional profit target out like you did, okay? So you've got 4.4 points, uh, 4 points in change, okay? So that's a pretty good move. And your stop is at 25 and you you got in at 21. Yeah, I mean, you're in the money. Even if you get stopped out, you're still in the money. And I know it's painful when it's hard to do. It's kind of like that CPE trade, good Lord. You go in and look at that and you look at how much it retrace, it's painful. But if you look at how many times it retraced before it went from, before it all got all the way up to 600% before it retraced down to 400 and something percent or whatever it was, we stopped out. Better than Pokemon Eye, right? Much better than Pokemon Eye. There were some horrible retraces along the way, but you're shifting gears to that longer term trend following. And as I preach, that longer term trend following accuracy, maybe 27% if you're lucky in capturing longer term trends. Okay. Uh, drawdowns, when those open profits erode, it could really be ugly. The good news is we took some profits off the table, but after a while, those profits, good problem to have, can get really, really big. So yeah, that's the hard part is stomaching that retrace down to your stop. And you know, I've got the little old lady looking at her laptop with a big face like, oh crap. You know, that's about right where your stop should be once you're in that longer term trend following mode. When you wake up and think, oh shoot, <laughs> it's probably about where it should be. All right, I know we've been talking about stocks all day and Facebook on and off, so you guys probably have everything you need. Uh, any any other ones you want to talk about? I got a few minutes. Going once, going twice. CNM, second entry. Yeah, let's talk about that. I'm glad you brought that one up. Okay, CNM, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay range, not bad. Okay, okay. Um, volume can be a little thin on this one. Let me just double check that at, at times, okay. But no, not too bad. Well, you got a couple 200 share days here. You know, it's interesting. I find in more recent times, I find myself wanting a little bit more volume in the IPO. It's kind of like the market has changed and... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell everybody, John. The market has changed, and and these new traders coming in. It, it just seems like a lot of the Robin Hood traders and the phone traders, as I call them, uh, it just seems like a little bit more volume is, is nicer. And it seems like the spreads are worse, even though the volume is better on some of these. So I like a little bit more volume. But yeah, it looks good. Um, and and here's, the thing, here's the thing with the IPO. And I threw this out in Facebook a while back. By the way, Facebook group is free, but to qualify, to keep the riffraff out, you do have to be a at least a gold member of DaveLander.com. And if you're on the service, you get gold for free, at least for now. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five. So your buy B would have been here on that day. And what I was saying earlier is one thing I've noticed with the buy B, and I think I know David... W has noodled with all this stuff a lot. He could confirm a lot of times you get a second entry, and that's what he just did a second entry on that. I fully agree with the second entry on this one, okay? But what I was trying to make, believe it or not, I had a point, and, and I brought this up on Facebook a while back. Sometimes these buy bees trigger, die out, and then make the real move later. Well, that's just breakout trading in general, right? What about all those shit coins we just talked about? They broke out, came in, and then take off. The Landry 100. A lot of them break out, come in, and take off. The problem is you don't know if they're going to take off and keep taking off, so you have to take the first signal. Now, with that said, if you're newer to trading, Kevin Hagerty once told me that when they get a new guy in their office, 
that until he proves himself and until he gets his feet wet and and they they see that he has emotional fortitude to trade, they only let him take second signals. Sec, second signals, okay? Let me get a sip of water. So this guy would see the signals like, oh, there's a signal, but I'm not allowed to take it. I don't want to get fired, but I'm going to watch this for the second signal. And then bam, there it is, okay? I used to call them second mouses, and I borrowed that from a trader for many years ago. But the early bird gets the worm. The early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. I was distracted. It's 32.5 and after hours. Damn, 32.75. Uh, see, I should, I should have taken that, okay? Shame. Let me, shame. Shame. <laughs> Getting some uh, wash in there. Just, I insulated this office so she wouldn't hear me, and, and she hears me. <laughs> I think the insulation I bought was sound amplifying insulation. 32.75. Damn. Let's see, that's, that's the thing about this business. No matter how you do, you can always do better. And, there's always gonna be something that you're that's getting away. Mortgage a house to buy a CNM. That's what John says. Yep, John must be long. <laughs> but yeah, uh, David. Well, you know, now that I know it's up and after hours, of course, I can't give you an honest answer now, right? But yeah, seeing this, I think a minute ago before I knew it was up because I can't. You can't see my screens over here. Neither can I. They're behind the curtain. I didn't know it was up. But yeah, second entries on these things. Again, sometimes they die out on the first entry. So with that in mind, if you are doing your IPO analysis before the close, obviously, and you see something that's going to be a second entry, then you might want to think about taking it and you might want to write that down. I think that would be a good place to leave you tonight. Write that down. <laughs> All right, everybody have a great night. Anything unanswered, just bring it up in Facebook. If you're not in Facebook, Dave Landry, DaveLandry.com slash contact all right one last one last one for sherry e b e t um you know i don't like this crazy bar over here and the other problem to sherry is it's super 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 thin only thirty thousand shares today and like i said earlier in more recent times it seems like you need a little bit more volume um i'd like to see like a little bit more pullback in here maybe and it's super thin so i would i would be really careful on on that until and unless some volume comes in now here's the thing sometimes in more recent times and, and it was like an ipo and i forget which one rainy rainy i'm like kicking myself in the butt because i didn't buy it and as mike p pointed out probably because of the volume and when i went back a little charts it's like yeah the volume wasn't there so what you might want to do with this one is if it catches on and it has a lot, a lot of volume, then it needs to be on your radar. But my this would not even come up on my radar with my scans because the volume is so low. So I like the way you think. I like you found a stock that's bottoming out. looks like it's taken off. It could turn out to, to be a wonderful setup at some point. But right now, the volume is just too low, too dangerous. All right, I think that's it. Everybody have a fantastic night. Again, anything unanswered, DaveLander.com slash contact, or just bring it up in Facebook, and I'll be I'll be there tomorrow. Again, everybody have a great night. We don't talk to you now and then. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much.